Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to take our first look at this thing here. Now this is the new Fabricator 2 from Hobby King. Now there was a Fabricator 1 about a year ago and we were very very close to buying one to try it out. That original one was made of clear acrylic where this one is made from aluminium. And this one has a couple of extra bits and pieces, so we've got hold of one to give it a try. Now, we are very, very big fans here of 3D printing. We have an awful lot of things that we tend to end up printing, things in the hobby, for everything from little prop guards for indoor quads to things like screen holders for the back of our Tyrannus. We have things like enclosures for the little cameras that we have to make them fit the frames that we're interested in things like stick protectors for the Tyrannus radios, and also some slightly wackier stuff as well. Now, the majority of the things that we design here for the hobby, we actually stick on Thingiverse. And on Thingiverse, you can download lots and lots of different parts for free, and then print them on your 3D printer. Now, last year, we did a whole nother series where we talked about 3D printing, and we actually built our first big Rostock 3D printer. Now the Rostock 3D printer is absolutely not for a first time builder or 3D printer user and we talked about that as part of the series and that's because it is a bit of a bugger to set up and you also had to build it as well and there were a couple of little challenges putting the thing together that you had to overcome. So you had to be very confident about mechanical and electrical engineering to get it working. The Fabricator 2 is a very different proposition. It comes all ready to go, and with the improvements over the previous version, it looks like a really good option for those of you that want to try 3D printing without breaking the bank. For a printer that's capable of not only printing PLA, but things like ABS plastics as well. So let me very quickly cover the main things that have changed between this and the previous version that's going to make this a little bit more of a versatile printer. The first thing is it is ready to print or RTP versus ready to fly. You take it out of the box, you plug it in, set up the software on your PC and with a little calibration and a bit of setup, you'll be ready to go. It has a heated bed and the heated end at the top also includes a cooling fan and will run up to temperatures of 250 degrees C. Now why that's important it means now that the printer can not only print PLA which is quite a hard shiny brittle plastic very easy to print and doesn't require high temperatures or heated beds but because of that brittleness isn't particularly good in my opinion for remote control models because if you have a crash they tend to just snap. Having the heated end that goes up to 250 degrees C and the heated bed means this little guy will print ABS. And ABS is pretty much what we print exclusively here because ABS is the same kind of stuff that a lot of props are made of. It's very resilient, it takes knocks very well, and it can absorb a lot of energy before it lets go. So if you have your print settings right and print ABS, you'll end up with some very tough little 3D printed parts. You can connect to this device over a USB cable that actually comes as part of the box. You can also print from an SD card if you give the file a very specific name. I think it's auto00.g. Uh, if you call it that, put it on the SD card. We press a button at the side and it will auto print that file for you. Or it actually includes Wi-Fi as well. So using a bit of software that comes as part of the SD card that you get with the kit, you can install that and set it up too. A couple of things you need to be aware of. First of all, is that the print volume isn't massive. It's only 100 millimeters deep by 100 millimeters wide by 100 millimeters tall. Now that isn't very big, but the majority of things that I print for the hobby are less than that size. And if you have a model that's a little bit bigger, you could cut it into several pieces and print them separately. But the vast majority of stuff I've built here, I've only probably printed on my big printer handful of things in the past 18 months that have actually been bigger than that size. So again, that's probably right for us if you want to try 3D printing and you want to get into the hobby and print and design some of this stuff for yourself. So first of all, let's talk about the unboxing. The unboxing is very straightforward. It comes already built, ready set up, inside two very big pieces of polystyrene. You pull the printer out and the other things in there, there is the box that has the power supply in it and the cable for the mains and there's also the USB cable too. 
little bag of bits that includes things like a little hex wrench, a little allen key that's there to do the leveling of the bed. And you will need to calibrate this. Um, ours, interestingly, already had what the remains of a print on the print bed. So you can see that the thing has been tested and set up before it left the factory. Very happy to see that. It means that all the components in here are actually going to work, or should do if they haven't been damaged in transit. But the vibration of it getting from Hobby King to me has meant that some of the screws have moved. And I had to go through the calibration routine a couple of times to get the printer dialed in perfectly and get it printing really nicely. So if you just jump back to the bench, let me just show you some of the parts that we've printed with this. Uh, these are all in PLA because I've just been using some old PLA filament just to get it all dialed in. Uh, but hopefully you can see that the resolution on this part, this is default print settings actually, 190 degrees for the hot end, which is actually a little bit cool than I usually tend to print PLA. But the resolution and the detail on this thing is actually very impressive, even without me spending a couple of hours dialing it in perfectly. Software setup is very straightforward. On the SD card as it comes, there's a couple of sample things that you can print, but it also includes the both Cura, which is the slicer or this technology that takes the design that you want to print and turns it into lots of very thin sections that the printer then prints one on top of the other. And the other bit of technology it has on here is Repetier Host. Now Repetier is very handy because it allows you to set the printer up and go through the calibration routine, but most of the people running 3D printers, once you've got to grips with this and you know your printer is reasonably well calibrated, ditch Repetier Host and just tend to use the slicer directly to, and then pop the card on an SD card to print. To install it, just put the SD card into your computer, install the Repetier host, it will take you through the entire thing. Once it's finished, then you have to go in and tell both Repetier host and Cura, the slicer, all the settings for the printer that you're going to use. There is a file on the card that you can load into Repetier host that will do the majority of that for you, but the rest of it is detailed in the manual. If you just work your way through each of the steps, plug those numbers into the relevant parts in Repetier host and the Cura part of the software, then you'll have set those pieces up. Word of caution, the temperatures and settings in here may need a little bit of tweaking. The 190 degree hot end temperatures and have not having the bed turned on is printing on the cool side for PLA. I would recommend if you're going to look at PLA, go for about 195 degrees potentially and ABS you're going to be looking at something like 210, 215 or even 220 degrees. Now that really depends on the filament and that's part of the fun that we'll talk about at the end that you have to just have a couple of test prints on the printer to get all the settings dialed in perfectly for the filament that you're using. Once you've got the software all set up, then the next thing to do is go through the calibration. Power the printer on, put some filament at the back. You do get a small amount of filament. Uh, it looks like the same filament that the test print was done with actually in the box itself. I've uh, installed some black PLA, as I said, when we looked at the models, and that black PLA has been fine just for getting this thing dialed in. Once you have it all connected, my tip here is always make sure that you have your finger close to the power button at the back. On the back of the device itself, there's only the connection for the power lead from the brick and also the power button as well. On the side, then there's just the button to start and stop the auto printing, the SD card slot and the USB slot as well. There's no display, there's nothing to tell you what's going on. So if you want to monitor what's going on, you have to either use the USB cable with Repetier Host or use the web interface and kind of monitor it from your PC using Repetier server. So with the printer connected to the laptop with the software with the USB cable, go into the manual control part of Repetier host and I then what I would do is hit the home button for each of the X, Y and Z axis individually and just make sure that they travel. Those little micro switches inside the printer that as they are activated should stop the travel of the bed or head in each of those three directions. Make sure that each of those are working and it's very happy. A little trick, I would probably blow some compressed air in the model. I found that quite a lot of packing was still hiding in the model on stuck onto some of the screws and threads that were nicely greased. So don't run the model with that polystyrene inside, particularly if you're going to start heating things up. That's just going to melt the polystyrene onto stuff. 
once you're happy that it's homing in all the axes and that's working, then the next thing I did was run through the calibration procedure and all I did was move the bed manually using the X and Y controls in the manual part of a Pessier host, moved it into each corner and then homed the Z axis and then tried to push a little bit of paper under the printed head. Now I find that the post-it note is exactly the right width and you're trying to push it through and get a little bit of resistance between the hot end or the print head of the printer and the bed itself. Once you're happy with that, then raise the head up a couple of millimeters, slide the bed into the next corner, and then home the Z axis again, and just adjust the bed using the little screws and the Allen key provided until you have the same resistance in each corner. You're looking for the head to just grab hold of the piece of paper so that you can pull it out and push it in with a little bit of force. You might have to go through that calibration routine two or three times in order to get everything zeroed, but once you've got that, then you can try and print. Next thing to do is then turn and heat up the hot end, get it up to temperature. I go for about 200 degrees the first time, and then feed in the filament until it squeezes out the end. That way, the, you know everything's working, there aren't any blockages, and you can go and have your first test print. There is already stuff on the SD card as provided, if you, so if you want to print something that's a little bit bigger, then you can just put the SD card in the side of the printer, hit the little button to the side, initially comes on orange, you press it, it goes blue, and it then runs and prints the default file that it can find that's called auto00.g. So for us, we've been pretty impressed with this so far. The setup and running of this thing has been very easy. We have had a couple of issues with bed adhesion. So let me finally wrap this up with a couple of tips and tricks when you first start printing with this. My main trick is going to be rerun the calibration a number of times. And if you find that you're really struggling with adhesion to the bed, then look at the bottom of the print and make sure that the bottom of the print looks a bit smushed. The first layer of the print should have really good contact with the tape that comes pre-installed on this printer in order for the print job to stay in place for the entire time it's been printed. Remember that the temperature and settings in the manual are there as a guide. They talk about 190 degrees for the hot end for something like PLA. Realistically, I would go for 195 or maybe a little bit more. That's one of those cool things that you can do a couple of little test prints with. An increase or decrease of 5 degrees for print filament temperature can make all the difference in the world. If you have problems with bed adhesion, and I had this where the prints were coming loose, the first couple of things that I'd try, I would increase the temperature of the filament slightly, bump it up by about five degrees, make it a little bit more liquid so that it is grabbing hold of all the little crevices in the special tape that's part of the print bed. The other thing I would consider is actually turning the print bed on and warming it up a little bit. Even for PLA, having the print bed just at a nice temperature like 40 degrees C can help that adhesion layer for the first part of the print. I found here, and I've been playing with it a little bit, that the flow of the plastic might have to be adjusted too. The filaments should all be 1.75 millimeters in diameter. But in reality, there is slight variances, and that depends on the manufacturer and type of filament that you've got. So one of the things that I tend to do is have a go at playing with the amounts, and usually, and even 105%, just make sure that I'm getting enough plastic so that the print is nicely bound together, and I'm not leaving too much air gaps or leaving weak parts in the print that will delaminate or pull apart if it comes under too much stress. Last thing you can do if it's coming off the print bed is reduce the print speed. Those millimeter per second settings that are in the manual, you can drop those down and those will help too. Lots of other people have different ways to try it using hairspray and glue and all kinds of things to help things stick. But for me, I tend to like to use a little bit more heat and that makes the plastic more liquid and it tends to grab hold of the surface better. Don't expect when you buy this printer that it's going to be perfect for the very first print. It is a slightly iterative process and you might have to go through several iterations with maybe the heats, the extruder temperature, maybe redo the calibration if something isn't quite sticking properly or you find that one side of the print is lifting. Those kind of things are 
absolutely par for the course. So although this is absolutely a printer that's aimed at those who don't want to go through the hassle of building and maintaining a more complicated, larger 3D printer, do be prepared to go through that little bit of trial and error at first. And the last big tip for me is don't move the Z-axis by hand. The Z-axis is the one that moves up and down. In hours, we had to just reset the Z-axis a little bit. And I think that might be because as I was moving it, I actually put my fingertips on the bottom of the carriage as I moved it from one spot to another. And I think that loosened part of the bits at the back. The vertical indexing is done by a spiral screw that goes through a plastic part. That plastic part internally has a number of threaded brass bushings and those bushings came out of that plastic enclosure a little bit so I just put them all back in little dab of super glue and it's been fine but be very careful with that z-axis don't try and move it by hand and when you're moving it make sure that you're holding the printer from the outside so that you don't try and pull that z-axis up as you're carrying it so over the next couple of weeks we will continue to test this printer out we have been very impressed by the initial performance of the printer. The original fabricator was well loved and lots of people were very sad when it went out of production. I'm very pleased that the fabricator 2 is here because they've addressed the things that I really want in a printer, particularly if you're going to use it for something like radio control modeling. You need the ability to print ABS and also the things like the Wi-Fi ability is very welcome as well. So, Bear with us, we're going to spend the next two or three, four weeks kind of printing with this, using this on a daily basis alongside our other couple of 3D printers, and we'll come back and give you an update. But for those of you that have been waiting for me to have a look at this printer before you kind of took the plunge, this is a great introduction to 3D printing and a very low cost way to start playing with this stuff. Do remember to get yourself some filament. The Filament doesn't come with a printer, that's the only thing you're going to have to get in addition. Hobby King sell loads of it, but it's available from lots of different places as well. Remember, if you're going to start off, PLA is probably slightly easier to print and doesn't need the higher temperatures, but in terms of the parts that will be more useful for radio control and be a lot more robust, then personally, I would always look at ABS. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organized set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there, and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.